If your friend was in this spot and even just thought about calling, you would beg the gods to finally send you some poker friends that aren't complete donkeys. But would you think differently if Linus Love, the best poker player in the world, made that call? And what about Crusher Berry Sweet? Is Bottom Pair the new nuts now? In this video we're going to discover the most important factor for bluff catching and also learn why poker is far from being dead. Let's start with this hand. So Linus opens the button, Barry calls and Linus seabets the flop for one third. Barry decides to check raise the second pair with top kicker and Linus calls. Barry checks on the turn 10 and Linus overbets. Barry calls and faces another overbet on the river for 2x pot. He does decide to call and loses to Linus' pocket 10s. If we check PO Solver, the flop play is reasonably standard. C betting pocket tens is done a decent amount of the time, and check raising ace 5 has the benefit of folding out these unconnected holdings, which still have overcards to the 5. Also, you'll get value from weaker 5s, a 3, ace highs, and straight draws. Pocket tens are a pure call, and on a board this dry, overall there's not much 3 betting going on. Interestingly, if given multiple bet sizing options on the turn, the solver actually prefers a different sizing than an overbet. We'll get back to why Linus might have chosen this sizing, however, at a later point in the video. Now, facing the overbet and the jam on the river, Barry has good blockers to Linus's pocket fives, and also ace queen on the river, so it is one of his better bluff catches. Right? And then Linus's 8-4 must be 2. He also faced a triple barrel including 2 overbets on the turn and the river. And while he blocks Barry's value hands only with the 8, at least he unblocks all of Barry's bluffs by having a 4, so that he can still have all the queen 9, 9 10, 9 7 and potentially more in his range. Right? Well actually, it's a no for both of them. According to Pio Solver, 8-4 is a clear fold on the river and even on the turn already. On the flop, 8-4 is a clear call for Linus. As in position is betting more than two thirds of his range, 8-4 is a clear call for Linus on the flop. The three of hearts on the turn is a relative blank, which allows Barry to overbet due to his nut advantage. Barry still has all good top pairs and better in this range, while Linus would three bet some of those combinations pre-flop or check raise them on the flop. And against this overbet, 8-4 is simply a pure fold according to the solver. The worst bluff catchers that still get called appear to be weak jack X and some bottom pair with the ace kicker. And on the river, the only calling hands that are not two pair or better are pairs that also have a straight blocker. And the same goes for Barry's ace 5, which also is a fold on the river and even close on the turn. Against the turn over bet, ace 5 is a zero EV bluff catcher and a pure fault on the river, losing at 1.4 BB in EV. So what, is this just NL2 where nobody ever folds a pair? Do these guys simply not know that their hands are a GTO fold? Well of course it could be, but I don't think that's the reason. And even though I cannot read their minds, I don't think they misevaluated which hands they should be calling down, according to Equilibrium. What I think is more likely is that they assumed the other guy simply wasn't playing an Equilibrium strategy. Let me show you. This is the button's equilibrium betting range on the turn. We can see that the bluffing region mostly consists of low cards with a straight draw, like 4-6, 4-deuce and 6-deuce. Now if we modify the betting range and only change the frequency of one hand, which will be 6-deuce in this example, and double their already low betting frequencies from 11% to 22% and 25% to 50% for the hard combo, and rerun the simulation, we can see that ace 5 already becomes a winning call on the turn. On the river we have to apply the same principle and even only add 10% to each of these four combos and ace 5 again becomes a profitable call. This just goes to show that the EV of hero calling a hand can be incredibly sensitive to the bluffing frequencies. I mean, which human is gonna know that they are not allowed to bluff a combo for 22% but only for 11 and then apply that not only to one combo but every single one in their range? It's practically impossible. With that in mind, we can revisit our 8 forehand. However, we have to do a little more modifying here. On the turn, we have to make all the straight draws bluff at full frequency and also up some of these random hands bluffing frequencies. Then 8-4 starts to become a profitable call. 
This might look like a big deviation, but it's not unlikely that Linus thinks Barry could be overbluffing in this spot, as he is definitely not the guy who can't show up with random bluffs. And then on the river, Barry is actually not allowed to bluff any missed queen 9, 9 7, and just a tiny amount of 9 10. So adding a few percent to those 9 10 combos quickly gets us to 8 4 being a river call. Of course, you can basically always justify any call this way, and it's surely not impossible that Linus just made a mistake here. For what it's worth, he also ran into Ace King. But either way, I think that this goes to show that even among the best players, poker is not a game of blindly chasing GTO frequencies, but maybe more than ever, an interesting search for ways to exploit your opponents, which leads us to the pieces that you can take away from this video. One. Instead of thinking about whether your own hand is a GTO call or not, think about if your opponent is likely to differ from a GTO line. Especially at low stakes, no one almost ever plays GTO, so it's more important to know how they differ. Is it too much bluffing? Or none at all? 2. Exploit through bet sizing. If you assume an opponent might make mistakes against a specific sizing, but maybe not against another one, use the one which exploits his mistakes, even if it is not preferred by the solver. Linus executed this when he thought Barry might call down too light against a bet size that shouldn't even be used in the first place. And he was right. 3. Don't be afraid to bluff catch even if your hand is normally considered a fold. If you have a reason to believe your opponent is over bluffing, and only then, put away the fear of making a wrong call and looking like an idiot. Fear is something that holds you back in so many ways in poker, so watch this video to learn some tools to help you play fearless.